Yeah. Hey, Andre, welcome to this very special Monday edition of What Car Truck Should I Buy, guys? Thank you for joining us. And this is a big truck week for us because yes. Andre and I are both going down to the State Fair of Texas where... Dallas. We, yep, we got a lot of truck news, so we're going to give you as much truck news ahead of time as we can. Yes. But our show today is entitled, Use Cars and Trucks with the Worst Fuel Economy. So we're going to be talking about uh, vehicles that uh, aren't going to be great on fuel. If you want to save money, this is not about this. It's about having fun and having big trucks too. Yes, yes, because uh, I got a feeling that fuel prices are going to go up. A bit. A yes. bit. So uh, let's get started uh, with uh, number 13 on our list. And this uh, list comes to us thanks to the fo fine guys at Car and Driver. And by the way, do you know they maintain a 75 mile an hour speed limit when they do their uh, MPG testing just like we do? Well, we do 70 miles an hour, and we do a 100-mile MPG loop. As you know, on TFL Truck Channel, we mostly do towing tests with trucks. And on Car Channel, we sometimes do uh, also MPG loops. Yeah. Uh, we go 70 miles an hour. They go 75. And by the way, Hummer is not on this list, all about vehicles, because this is more recent. Yes. You know, this list is about for uh, about 2018 the last cars years. and trucks, like last year's used cars. Yeah, so uh, here we go, number 13, you can probably tell what that is, it was in the thumbnail. <laughs> uh, the uh, Chevy Camaro ZL1 1LE 17 MPG, estimated EPA highway at 20 MPG. Uh, we drove the previous version of that, and it's just... Um, yeah, it's, it's a an, beast. It's, an, it's a big engine with like four wheels <laughs> and a steering wheel. It's That's awesome. about all it is. So remember you and I went to... Um, there's an event next to Las Vegas on SEMA. Remember, yes. we drove every Camaro imaginable. I remember, yeah. And I remember getting into this car or one like, you know, I think it was the SS 1LE actually. Yeah. And I thought to myself, this car is too much for me. Yeah. Just too powerful. Yeah. But you know, there's a theme here. So EPA says 20 MPG. Yeah. And um, car and driver got 17. You know what's crazy about that number? What? Like that back in 1971, our Super Beetle <laughs> probably got that. <laughs> with a little air cool. But now a 650 horsepower <laughs> V8 muscle it's, car is it's doing. It's crazy, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the other crazy thing is um, back in the day, you know, the manufacturers would overestimate their fuel economy uh, and they would overestimate their horsepower. And now we're finding. Well, there was not a lot of checks and balances, no, right? Now we're finding the exact opposite. You know, these numbers are probably a little conservative. Well, number 12, should we go on number 12? Sure, go for number 12. And we actually own one of these. Yes, it, it <laughs> does suck gas at a prodigious rate. Toyota Land Cruiser, EPA highway estimate of 18, which is, I think, a little bit optimistic. Uh, car and driver got 17 MPG on their highway loop at 75 miles an hour, but it's a solid vehicle. Yeah, you know, Boney Chuck says less miles per gallon, more smiles per gallon. Yeah, You are I agree. exactly right, Boney Chuck. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, 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 the more it uh, sucks, the less it is fun. And Davis Joseph is actually joining us from Dubai. Whoa, Dubai. Th th thank you, Davis. Yeah, thank you for coming in all the way from Dubai. So let's, uh, yeah. let's, let's, let's sprinkle in some truck news and might as well get the big news right out of the way. Um, we think that in the next couple of days we will have the numbers for the new Ford Super Duty. And what we're talking about are the, the big power stroke. Yeah, so, yeah the horsepower. So th those are the two numbers that we don't and, and know. the towing. Yeah. yeah. So the power numbers on the new updated 6.7 liter and also their towing numbers. And we're anticipating getting that s this week. Yeah. And main day actually is Thursday yep. for the um, st auto show, truck show. All right. So let's, let's, let's play a game. Yeah. What, what do you think the horsepower will be on the new power stroke? So right now they're at 450. Yeah. So there has to be more than 450. I'm going to say the what new power say? stroke. Uh, will be at 263. I'm sorry, 463. 263? What? They're gonna, <laughs> what a shocker that would be. Ford drops the horsepower by half. <laughs> 463. All right. All right. I'm going to go with I'm gonna go with just 500. Why not? 500? What? Nice and even? Yeah. And now, that, of course, a bigger number. What do you think the torque will be? At least 1,000 torques. Although, you know, there'll be 1,000, like 50. They, you think? Yeah, so, I think so. Um, I think it would be 1,025. All right. How about so, that? So let's keep this in mind until we get to Thursday. I'm saying 500,050. See, notice the fives in there? Yes. Easy to remember for... I'm going to write this down. <laughs> 51050. All right. David Brown says 1,001 pound foot of torque. I like that number. I like uh, that they're number. Not, that, they're going to go more than that. <laughs> they're not going to just up them just, by one. Just one torque? That, that's like a... That, that could be a, a dino mistake. No, they got to get that right. <laughs> Rance Smith's yes. like 600. I'm hoping horsepower, not 
pump would have torqued it. 600 would be too much. I mean, maybe tuned yeah. would be 600, but stock, no. So we're uh, going gonna to get those numbers. Then we're also going to get, uh, uh, I think, well, you're going to get a peek the, at the new Titan. Yes, yeah, so a 2020 update. Um, they actually showed a teaser image. Yes. So it's going to have a nice big logo with kind of a letters that light up that say Nissan. That's so, becoming a thing. Um, yeah, lighting up your logo is becoming a big thing. Backlighting uh, it, yeah. Backlighting it. And um, so that's going to be, you're going to go to a Toyota event. I am, I am so. going to go to it. And I'm going to get to finally drive and review and hopefully post as soon as possible the new Sequoia TRD Pro. Yeah, we haven't it had. It seems like two it years It was ago. elusive. Oh, man, it seems like two years ago they unveiled that at the Chicago Auto Show, but it, <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. It was probably, what? Yeah, like, it was like a year and a half, but still a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a long time. Uh, and, at, you know, at the show, it was What's basically... Wasn't it this year, though? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, this year, six months. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're... you're, you're, I, I'm, you're I'm not... You're you are still, like, from Australia. Your brain... <laughs> Andrew was in I Australia have, I have last truck year. news from Australia, guys. <laughs> so I, I went to a Hyundai venue event um, in down under, um, at um, uh, the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, and every truck I saw, every SUV I saw was modded. Either a lift, bigger tires, front bumper, the snorkel. Uh, I saw it all. Yeah. Awnings. Yeah. It was cool. I'm going to do a video for TFL Off-Road about it. That'd be good, yeah. yeah. I'm sure we'd love to see the, all those Utes running around. Utes! Yeah. Yeah. I've been watching the show on uh, um, Prime, and it's basically these guys go to the northernmost point of Australia, uh, in like all their utes, and every single vehicle has snorkels. Yes. I think it's in Australia, it's, and, and because what well, like up there, they're, yeah, up yeah. there they're fording water. But I think it's mainly because of dust. Yeah, because when you're traveling on dirt roads, you want to yeah. have that you know desert air intake, according to Toyota. Yeah, exactly. So I think I think actually we make fun of them, but in Australia, it's a thing. It's a real thing. All right, number eleven, Andre, is uh, the Jeep Grand Cherokee uh, Trackhawk at 17 mpg. EPA 17, and the car and driver got 17. Trackhawk, what an amazing machine, right? I want to know how they manage 17. Oh, you, didn't, didn't Nathan and you do an MPG run on we this? We did, to yeah. Moab? Yeah, we did it to Moab. He got some crazy, like, high number. So that's the beauty of this engine, right? It's super powerful, 707 horsepower, but it can also kind of idle along on a highway. I got to tell you, I have this thing where I love cars that make no sense, and trucks, right? Something that, like, a G-Wagon squared, right, where it's 15 feet in the air, or a... <laughs> A Hellcat that yeah. has way too much power for you know the rear wheels, uh, and uh, I didn't fall in love with this thing. I was expecting to fall in love with the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. Nathan and I went to Maine, put on the track, zero yeah. to sixty three point four seconds every time, like every clockwork. Time, like clockwork. Uh, and just, just something about and I know it's sacrilegious. So Zach is gonna don't throw, throw things. Don't throw tomatoes at me, <laughs> but it just didn't work for me. Yeah, I, I just felt like it was heavy and. Uh, at that it, point, at that point, is. at that point, it's just you know, it's like a. I, normally, I would say it's like a sledgehammer to a knife fight, but I'd rather have a knife at that point. Does that make sense, guys? No, it makes no sense. You know the thing with this though, and <laughs> yeah. why I love this thing. All right. Is a. It is just so ridiculous having that 707 horsepower in a Jeep. But the thing about it being in a Jeep as opposed to the Challenger Hellcat, is because this is all-wheel drive, it's not scary. It's, it's more just manageable. stupid yeah, fast. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, and Joseph, I love that. Joseph Whiskey Beal gives you a real backhanded compliment there. Actually, he doesn't. He said, love the Hyundai venue video. Redline review video is probably his best ever. Okay. <laughs> Poor Andre. Ouch, dude. That's so cruel. Well, Andre did a video review. Well, I did two videos. He yeah. did only one. Yeah, Andre which, did. Uh, which uh, video are you referring to? Anyway. Yeah. Oh, that. Uh, ouch, dude. You didn't like Andre's video? I, the guy, this guy missed his flight in San Francisco, basically spent two days well, flying, and you like Redline better. Ouch. Well, Nothing wrong with Sofian. I like Sofian. No, He's but good, he but doesn't do a live show, does he? No, he doesn't. He, 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 um, well, for live shows, you have to come here. Um, and, um, and I did not drive an um, yeah. original Land Cruiser, so I did not. He also doesn't like uh, do crazy videos where we put up uh, um, Tesla Model X is against uh, little Towing. electric tuk tucks. And uh, yeah, the video today on uh, car yeah. was it yesterday? It was today. Yeah, That's today's yeah. video. Yeah, T today's video on TFL car is great. Um, Alpha SDI 0911 says that his 2019 Ram 1500 Bighorn with a 5.7 he averaged 23 mpg from Virginia to Chicago, which is a great result for Hemi. 
Yeah, it's really good. So there you go. Pretty impressive, yeah. Uh, we couldn't manage that in a Rebel. All right, dude, number 10, Lexus LX570, 17 MPG, 18 on the highway. Yeah, there's a theme here. So, you know, the Land Cruiser was there. The LX is basically a very similar and vehicle. And right below it is the Infiniti QX80, all-wheel drive, 17, 18 on the highway. Big, burly, seven-passenger. But also very powerful. Very right? powerful, So yes. you're combining several cool things. You're combining luxury, interior, big power, Lots of comfort. You can also tow a big trailer with these. So I think that's all goodness. Like somebody said, smiles per gallon, right? Yes, smiles per gallon. All right, uh, number eight, we have the Ford Transit, 17 MPG. So that's switching gears, yeah. switching gears a bit. So I think the Is main reason... Is that a tall one or the short one? Um, I, I they the tested one. one with yeah. a V6 EcoBoost. Okay. Okay. Um, the EcoBoost engine in the Transit is a little bit less power than in their F-150 trucks. Yeah. But the, I think the main reason for poor economy is just how big the thing is, right? I mean, it's big and tall and slap-sided and just got a lot of surface area. So I think that's the reason there. Um, one of my neighbors does work in one of these Transit vans. He loves how quick they are. Really? I mean, they're just really fast you know what they not good at though have you ever been in one like as a people mover where they try to put way too many people in them I yeah think, I think, with a low roof right with I, think, a low roof. I think as like a airport van they'd yeah. stuff like 200 people in there i'm not joking guys the seats are like like this big and so you, you, yeah you're sitting like this yeah and, and yeah. your luggage is on your lap because there's no place to put it because the back has like well like that much room behind the yeah. rear seat yeah they're not good and and yet that's a common theme among all these not just them but mercedes is the same thing Nissan does the same thing with their NV. Yeah. It's pretty miserable. Yes, Zach. So um, while we're on the subject of vans, I wanted to touch on a comment from uh, Cesar Hernandez here asking if there's any word on the Tesla truck. We don't have that, but we do have some interesting news out of Rivian, don't we, Andre? And also Bollinger. So um, several things, first of all. So Elon Musk tweeted a few days ago. Well, he tweets every day, but yeah. he tweeted a few days ago that Tesla truck, pickup truck news may be coming in November. He keeps so, pushing it back. It was supposed to be in September. Yeah, and now so now we have to hold our breath till yeah. November for that. Then Rivian, or actually not Rivian, uh, Amazon made an announcement last week saying, we're going to order 100,000 electric vans for delivery from Rivian. And I was not around. I was in Australia, but Zach covered the story. And when I saw that story from uh, Australia, my eyes popped out. I was like, what van? They never announced a van. Um, so that was just a really odd story. And then this week on Thursday, uh, Bollinger is dropping their latest trucks too. Yeah, so we won't be there, unfortunately, because of the <laughs> we but told them, oh my gosh, <laughs> we were like, hey guy, probably the biggest truck show in America is happening. Why don't you do the it same day? The same day, and he decided to still do it. So for all you people who love Bollinger, you're going to probably get inundated with State Fair of Texas news. But we'll still cover it. I mean, we'll, we'll cover still, it. We'll yeah. still do our best, but, but yeah, we won't a, be there. Yeah, there's a lot going on that day. One more thing before we move on. Uh, I did want to point out some of the more eagle-eyed viewers noticed our uh, little counter there yeah. just broke and went to zero subscribers. What? So JRMSDT03 said, why is the counter at zero? It actually just fixed itself weirdly. Oh, it so, was a glitch. I learned that they hate us. Well, <laughs> so Sophie, all is that you, Sophian, since I, I called you out on your video? Is Sophian you? canceled our subscription. Yeah, what would you do, dude? <laughs> So YouTube changed the way it counted subscribers, so we can't see exactly how many subscribers we have anymore. Yeah, it's rounded, like it, right? It rounds, yeah, and yeah. I think it has an effect on the so what uh, counter to? like that. Two hundred twelve thousand. That was a two hundred eleven thousand when we started this. So it's hey, there you go. Yeah, progress. <laughs> All right. Um, by the way, tomorrow at four p.m. Um, our time, uh, we're putting up a pretty cool uh, Porsche Taycan video that Alex did for us. You know, he took that thing and did a top speed run on the Autobahn to see yeah, how fast he could get. Actually, yeah, insane. He actually did it. Yeah, he, did it. Yeah, yeah, he floored it and uh, kept on going till it wouldn't go any faster. So mm -hmm. uh, how fast is the Taycan? We know now. We yeah. know the real number. And well, it's actually faster than the stated number. So I was pretty impressed. So wait till that, 4 o'clock tomorrow. That's going to be cool. Dan Atkinson says that his semi has to be on top of this list because he gets 6.8 MPG. Is that towing or not? Towing? That's probably towing, Dan. Yes, absolutely. You should be on top of this list. All right, where were we at? Oh, we were at the Ford Transit. Number seven, Andre. No the, surprise there. Ooh. ooh. People want to know about if there's any news on this. The Toyota Tundra 17 MPG. Can you please ask them about this at, in Texas? About the 17 MPG? <laughs> no. Why is no, it so? No, don't ask him about the 17. Ask him why, when is why the it new only has one USB port? What should I ask him, Andre? <laughs> when is the new one coming? Come what? on. What? Give us the new truck. 
Why, why has it been like 15 years since they did? What, what are these, which question do you want to hear? What, what's the answer? Can which, they add another USB port? Can they add another, which one do you want to know? Uh, so um, anyway, um, I'm actually surprised. 17 is not bad for that big giant V8. And they have a 430 rear end in some of those trucks. All right, people are saying number one's going to be the Bentley Malsan, or is it Malsane? Well, how do you pronounce it, Andre? Mosan or Mosane? Mosan. If we can, if we can Zach, pronounce. what do you say? Mosan or Mosane? Mosan. Mosan. I actually uh -huh. did a video with that from the Geneva Auto Show. They got super, like 1.3 million views, and all I did yep. was sit in the back of it with the <laughs> designer, and people, people kept poking their heads and trying, Hello? Trying, trying to sit there yes. while I was doing the video, and I had to keep, I had to keep shooing them out. It was pretty scary. Yeah. Uh, and the worst part was those people were like the little spies, industrial spies. Uh, <laughs> All right, number six, the Toyota Sequoia. Ooh, we're getting down. 16 MPG, estimated 17 on the highway. Once again, another big-ass seven-passenger SUV. Yeah, a yes. few people guess this one. No surprises here. Yeah. But the funny thing, they got worse on this than the Tundra. And you would think the Tundra might get better, but maybe the, the yeah, I don't know. I think it's heavier, maybe, or is the Tundra heavier? Which one's heavier? They're both heavy. They're both heavy, but this has an SUV body, and the Tundra has just an open bed. Maybe it's aerodynamics, so maybe. It All right, number five, way. Andre, the it's Chevy Silverado 3500 HD, last generation, 16 MPG. Well, this is a Duramax. This is a V8 diesel, and we've tested many of these trucks yes. uh, on our loop, so maybe another day we should do uh, our towing countdown. Yes. You know, the most efficient and least efficient tr trucks when towing. Of course, we have it on our website, too, but um, 16 MPG is not bad. I expect a little bit more from the big diesel. Yeah, I did. It, it's a little depressing that it's only 16. Maybe it's because of the speed. You know, when you increease your speed, yeah. 75, 70, 75. Well, it's not you're the most aerodynamic thing in no, the world. No, it's, it's, a, it's a fist like, in the like wind. Tom Peter says, it's a fist. <laughs> right there, when, look. You, when you have a fist in the wind, you're going to get uh, a lot of thirsty uh, cylinders. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big fist. All right. Um, uh, what else are we doing this week? So uh, we've got um, me doing the Sequoia. Yes. You doing the, the Titan. Titan. Both uh, of us are doing the Ford, Super Duty News. Or Ford, Ford doing news. the Super Duty News. That, that, that still leaves GM. What are they t doing? Uh, they're, they're, they're holding their cards secrets. close. Yeah, yeah. Ca cards close to the chest. Yeah. Um, and also Ram is holding their cards close to the chest. Wouldn't so. that be cool if they rolled out a TRX? Ooh. We know the TRX is out there. We've seen prototypes. Yes. Uh, testing in the California desert, that usually is a good sign that it's coming. So they could, they unrolled the prototype there uh, a couple of years ago for the previous generation. So mm -hmm. maybe they'll actually do the real one. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Jim Morrison, who was there, was like a kid in the candy store. Yes. The head of Ram at that time. He had a big smile on his face as he was goosing that throttle. And remember, remember that? The, the, the veil was coming up in the wind. Yeah, I know. It was revealing itself. Yeah. Um, uh, Tom Servo has a comment here. He says that 2020 Tundras are already on the lots, and they have remote start, and it's not working very well. Uh, but um, so, I mean, Toyota keeps updating their truck. You know, they're adding a little pieces to it every so often, like they added adaptive cruise control to it recently and an integrated brake controller recently. Ooh. So we, we just need a new truck. Car loves us. Any news on the Bronco? Yeah, there is news on the Bronco. We yeah, got, there is we, a bit we, we news. Got some, we got some insider information today. Yeah, so one uh, person emailed us from a, a, a dealership. He found this from a dealership. Yeah, we, we, this, this is unconfirmed. But unconfirmed, yeah. and this is kind of secondhand, but that the next Bronco, we're talking about the bigger one that's based on the Ranger, will have a manual transmission. That's great. And that's really great because I think it's really trying to compete against the Wrangler, right? The Wrangler has a manual, manual offers yeah, a manual. Yeah. And the other news was that it will have a 33-inch tall tire, which, once again, the Wrangler has a 33 also. So, so yes, when are they going to unveil it? And you forgot the biggest news of all. A turbocharged engines? No, no. When you buy a Bronco, you get a Bronco. Oh, an actual horse? Yeah, you get an actual horse. Or yeah, is it yeah, a toy horse? No, it's a real horse. You get oh. a horse. Uh, it's Ford's opportunity to kind of help with the overcrowding of horses in the West here. So when you buy okay. a Bronco, you get a Bronco. So. But you don't get a Denver Bronco. Those, those guys are precious. Um, and luckily, it'll tow a horse trailer. No, I'm just joking, of course, Andre. Uh, the other news, of course, that you figured out was the Tremor news. How about that? Yes, yeah, so we got another, actually two uh, tips. Yeah, which is pretty uh, exciting. Yeah, one guy had it from an auto show in Florida, and the other guy actually ordered one. Um, and the Tremor package, according to these two guys, once again, unconfirmed yep. by Ford, is 3975 bucks. so just under four grand. And at the office, the today, when we figured that out, we decided to build one up with yeah. every option. Yes, guess so... Hey, you got to guess what number. Let's let them guess what number we got to. This is the most expensive 2020 
tremor, diesel, crew cab you can build. Yeah. As far as we know right now. Yeah. So look, you guys have to guess. In give, the give us a number. Give us a number. Make yeah. it round. Don't give us like, you know, 10,042. Give us, <laughs> give us a round number. Yes. And the closest person gets my congratulations. Okay. That's good. How's that? Yep. All right. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, so we were at the Chevy Silverado. Number four is another van, the Nissan NV3500, 15 MPG, not rated on the highway, of course. You know, we only w reviewed one of these yeah. years ago. Yeah, they're hard to get their hands uh, on. They're hard to get their hands on, and they're not selling in huge numbers. And of course, I mean, it's got a big V8 gas. And you know, they never put the Cummins in there. I really hope they put the Cummins in there, but now the Cummins V8 is gone from the Titan XD, so. The number three is actually a surprise, Andre. It's yeah. the older Ford F-250, 15 MPG. This is the current, the older generation right, power right, stroke right, diesel. Yeah, yeah. So, and we've tested, you know, gazillion of these trucks. So we've uh, got some guesses, and yep. uh, Ryan Marnitage got it right, $90,000. Very good, Ryan. Was he one of the first? Yeah, he was one of the first. There you go, yeah, 90, 90 grand. Yeah, so that job, includes a uh, diesel engine, the new one, 10-speed automatic, yep. It's got a tremor package, which is also, you know, gives you the tires, the lockers, um, all the crawl control system. And then it had a panoramic sunroof, um, and it was platinum. And Bronco? No, no Bronco. It was platinum crew cab, um, 4x4, 90 grand. Wow. Yeah, if only we still lived in the age where you could get a truck like that for 75 grand, as some people guessed. Yes, but you know what? I don't think there's a ceiling to it. Second I thought, think, thought it was 173,000. Well, that would be like a Bentayga Or maybe truck. just 173 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a lot of people are guessing this next one, Andre. Number two is the Mercedes AMG 63, last generation, 15 MPG, 14 on the highway. Yeah, that thing is, the twin turbo uh, is thirsty. Monster. And it's another brick well, in the wind. Well, this oh, is, yeah, it's like this two is, bricks in the wind, man. <laughs> this is the old generation, so this right. is the larger displacement yeah, twin yeah. turbo V8. You know what's yeah. interesting? They didn't test the uh, 65, the 12 floater, because I'm betting that would be the thirstier. <laughs> yeah, you tested one in Moab. I did, yeah, 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 that was crazy. That's, that's the kind of car I like, right? <laughs> So you like that, but not the truck hawk? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. Well, what is I the know, deal? It makes no sense. I don't, I don't well, get it myself either. I think either. there's just more of a sense of drama with the, the G -class. class. Yeah, there's more, there's more theatrics. More of an occasion. More panache right. there, yeah. Slam the door, you get that kind of bank-like vault click. You floor it, you get those side pipes. I mean, the thing about the track hawk is, at the end of the day, even with that engine, it's still a Jeep. Yeah, but it's a really wide, mean-looking Jeep. Yeah, I love it. With yellow brake calipers. But this is, you know, you has know, that's character. Kind of, you know what the, the thing about that Jeep, the Trackhawk, is? That's a good one to buy used. Let somebody else take the massive depreciation, and you get yourself a Hellcat-powered Jeep for like a quarter of the price. Just wait a couple more years, yeah. wait yeah. a couple more years, yeah. All right, number one, Andre, this is a surprise. The 20, which one is it? The last generation, Ram Yeah, this is last gen, so it's not 19 With a 6.4 liter Hemi and... Six-speed automatic, 14 MPG. That would be the power wagon, wouldn't it? Yeah, this is basically kind of a power wagon setup, although I don't think yeah. they tested the power wagon itself. Uh, but it's a big Hemi, uh, 410 horsepower, right? right? And they've improved this because uh, they put an eight-speed automatic behind the new truck. Yes. So behind this engine in the new truck. And, you know, we test, I tested the power wagon on our loop. Yeah. I was really, really pleasantly surprised. We did a Rebel versus power wagon video. That video is on TFL Truck. And uh, you guys been asking us, test a regular new Ram Heavy Duty with the Hemi and 8-speed. And I've been asking for it from Ram, and it's coming in like a month. So stay tuned, please. Uh, we'll be testing one soon. Yeah, and the other thing that we're hopefully doing soon is we're doing, we're getting a lot of emails, of course, on our uh, story that we did about the new and old uh, Ram diesels, right? And how eco diesels. The, the eco diesels and how the e how the reflash has actually made the truck very difficult to drive. So we've been working, Andre's been working, I shouldn't say we, Andre's been working very hard on getting both an old one that's been tuned by FCA, flashed, and one that hasn't been together, yes. so we can actually compare the two. That's the story that we're working on. Yeah, so and I'm hoping to do it tomorrow, so I think Jason is going to meet me at the track, and uh, well, hopefully, Jason, please, if you're watching, uh, text me. Um, and then I, ha I found a truck that hasn't been um, recalled yet. Yep. So I, I found one. So. So hopefully we can do that. So we got some fun videos coming. What's what? Speaking of the Eco Diesel, what you got coming tomorrow? Well, we have a new one, the 2020 Eco Diesel V6. We did a loop uh, loaded uh, with a trailer, 7,000 pounds, and empty uh, on our MPG loop. And we were really surprised. It sounds like a clickbaity headline, but it's true. We were shocked by the fuel economy. You should see the, f the look on Mr. Truck's face. Uh, all right. So so what? Should we have him guess? 
both numbers. You, uh, have, you, have, you have to ring the bell. You have to guess both numbers, right? We've got, we got five bucks from James Dilliman. What does he say? What does um, James say? Late to the chat. I'll rewatch later. But did you mention tunnel covers and MPG? Well, no, James. Now we, we, did, we, we just did. <laughs> we just did. But so hold on. So let's let's have a game. Let's have some fun. All right. Um, so we're gonna go live from the show. From Texas? From Texas, yeah. We're going to go live. On Thursday. On Thursday, probably about noon. About lunchtime-ish. Yeah, mountain time. So we're going to give you a walk around uh, from the show. But I'd like you guys to take a guess at what kind of MPG we got towing. You want to do both, towing and non-towing, or do you want to just do towing with the Eco Diesel? Just do towing. Did you so get both? Yeah, we did both. I uh, get both. You got to get both of them right. And if you get both of them this right. This is 70 miles an hour on the highway. If you get both of them right, we'll send you a TFL truck sticker. Yes. So 70 miles on the but highway. But when should they guess? By when? Well, they got to guess now, tonight. and then tomorrow morning okay. when the video will come out, and then whoever gets it right. You know what the two numbers were? Yes. Well, let's see if anybody gets it right. We'll watch. Okay, okay. Yeah. So tell us, with a 7,000-pound trailer, yeah. the MPG on the new Eco Diesel. Yeah, Low, and towing and non-towing. And then empty. Yeah. And this is two-wheel drive, by the way, 355 rear end, uh, tradesman. So kind of a basic truck. Yeah, so, uh, but you got to get both of them right. No, no, just half of it. So... Uh, I'm sorry, um, James and several other people are talking about tonneau covers. Uh, the truck we used did not have a tonneau cover. Okay. Uh, they do theoretically help. Didn't um Well, we have one sitting right there. Yeah, there's one right there. We could do that video. We the, could, we could, you know, yes. we, could, we could go do a, a, an MPG loop with the truck with or without with a without, cover. Yes, yes. We could try that. But, you know, we just did one with and without a tent, which is actually and the number more, one, more timely. Yeah, and not a lot of people cared. So yeah, do you guys I, care? Uh, yeah, I was like, you know, we spent a lot of time and effort and money doing that because it's not, you know, it takes a whole day to do one of those MPG, mm -hmm. and not a lot of people watched it. So I'm, I'm thinking people really don't care. Well, apparently these guys care because they're talking about tunnel covers. So uh, Mike G says not towing 25 MPG, towing 10 MPG. Mm, no, 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 no. You know. uh, Shay uh, Beckman says not towing 31, towing 13.1. Close. Joseph Whiskey Beal says uh, 10 MPG towing. Uh, 27 regular. No. 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 If any of them get it right, we'll let you know. Keep going, guys. You have to be close on both. They have, um, they have to be close. You have to hit it exactly. Well, you have to hit it. Yes. Yeah. We're not giving away these expensive <laughs> stickers, Andre, just because they're close. And also, it took a lot of effort to make this video, so it's really a lot of uh, a big deal to us. Yeah, but it was very uh, interesting. You know, I yeah. don't. You know, I was thinking about that eco diesel, Andre. So obviously, we did the story where everybody had to have their engines. Their diesel engines Reflashed, refreshed, yeah. and then we got hundreds, literally hundreds of emails from people saying it was miserable to drive. Basically, the first four seconds, nothing happened. Especially and they also suffered in fuel economy. They suffered in fuel economy, yeah. and they said, this is not the truck I bought. And then FCA came back, I think partially due to our reporting, I hope, and they said, we're going to make this right. We're gonna and then we're going to re redo the, potentially redo the reflash. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, the, and the question, of course, is, you should watch your numbers, make sure they get them. Uh, the question is, did they burn the eco diesel, you know, by having that first truck be such a the brand? You mean? Yeah. Did, yeah. Did they hurt that, or are people still going to buy it, or is there going to be the reputation of the truck now so much so that you can't really, you know, buy it? Well, it has to uh, be based on I'm, some of the testing we do. Right? I mean, I mean, you know, Volkswagen isn't selling diesels anymore, <laughs> right? No. Neither is Porsche. Neither is Audi. Nope. Mercedes, I think, is also kind of backed out. Yeah. Jaguar backed yeah, out. Yeah, they all backed out. of. Well, the only uh, one that's still selling um, diesels is Land Rover, actually, and that's because they had them in the pipeline. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I, I'm not sure if, if the new one's going to do well, but... So, uh, so far, no no hits. I mean, I you guys are getting closer, some of you on MPG numbers, but no hits. I hope it doesn't, doesn't do that because that Chevy six-cylinder, the straight six, is a really good diesel. Yeah, and actually, you guys have been asking when we're going to test it. Um, Third week of October, it's coming. Yeah. The 1500 Eco... Uh, Eco Diesel? No. Duramax. Duramax. Sorry. Baby, we, have, we don't have a name for it, right? We've got Baby Duramax, Duramax... Or Goldilocks of Duramax. <laughs> what, what was our name for that thing, Zach? Do you remember? The Plus Just Right Duramax? <laughs> Something like that. I don't the remember. Not So Max that. Duramax? Because we have the big Duramax, oh, which no. is the V8. Was it Minimax? Is that the name? Yeah, the Minimax. Minimax. Yeah, Minimax. <laughs> that was it. The Minimax. <laughs> Minimax. The and Minimax. the baby Duramax is, of course, the Chevy Colorado engine. Well, Andre, so. I, I can't believe we went through another half hour uh, of uh, truck and car talk. Uh, yeah. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. And come back on Thursday when we're going to give you a walk around to the State Fair of Texas. So if there is a TRX there, you will see it. You will see it first because yeah. we're, we're going to jump on top of that. And uh, what we'll do is hopefully. Uh, 
um, be first with all your all the news. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's going to be a busy day, but well worth it. And um, so I don't know if we're doing a show on Friday, are we? I mean, we'll if see. we're doing R it Ryan on Thursday. Ryan says Goldie Max. Oh, Goldie Max. Yeah. That's like not a bad name. Goldie. Yeah, it's not Max. Yeah, it's not bad. Like Goldie Hawn. <laughs> Gold. Goldie Max. Goldie Max, yeah. Goldie Max. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. I'll keep watching the, uh, your guesses on the fuel economy, and we'll let you know. You're going to play us out, dude. Oh, yeah. do you want some music? Yeah, I want some music. Uh, yeah. Okay, just check this Still out. Still jet lagged, are you? I don't know what's wrong with me. The Duracell.